Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Potcotter, and you're listening to Call Talk for September 4th, 2024. Today's topic is the power of community for women in contact center leadership. If you're listening live, we invite you to be part of the show and ask questions. Here's how you can do it. Email me at talk at benchmarkportal.com. I want to remind everyone that all of our shows are archived and available to listen to at benchmarkportal.com any time of the day. And with that, I'd like to introduce the host of the show, Bruce Belfiore. Okay, thank you, Alan, and welcome back to Call Talk, everyone. Today we'll be talking about the power of community, and I'll be interviewing Valerie McSorley, who is a seasoned professional with over 25 years of experience excelling in sales, marketing, and customer success. Valerie leverages her extensive network in the contact center sector to enhance client performance and satisfaction. She's a founder of Contact Center Nation, which provides educational programming and high-level networking opportunities for contact center professionals. And during the pandemic, Valerie created the Women in Contact Center Leadership Series, a virtual community for dialogue, learning, and mentorship for female leaders in the industry. She hosts a virtual event every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern time dedicated to women in our space. She serves on various professional and community organizations as a board member, chapter president, podcast guest, and MC for both in-person and virtual events. So she's a really busy person. Among other industry appearances, she led the Women in Leadership Breakfast at our Benchmark Portal Call Center Campus event in May 2024, and it really went well. She holds two BA degrees in economics and sociology for, from the State University of New York at Binghamton. And with that introduction, I'd like to welcome Valerie to the show. Welcome, Valerie. Oh, thank you, Bruce. It's such a pleasure to be here. Okay, great. Well, let's get right into it. So the first question I'd ask you is, what drove you to start this virtual community in the first place? So, you know, going back a little bit, um, I had started my business about uh, 25 years ago, and I had an event planning business. And I started to get uh, more and more involved with uh, my clients in the contact center space. So I was working with one organization that we were together for about 15 years. We did quarterly events, and I did all of their marketing and all of their uh, all kinds of things for them. And then that grew into other um, other clients within the space. And then I decided, people were asking, well, where else do we do these, do you do these events? And uh, I decided it was time to take them from the Boston area and to go uh, more of a national stage. So I started and I built a five-city tour that went to Phoenix, Chicago, Boston, Miami, and D.C. And during that time, we are about five years in, we were doing very, very well, and about a week out from our first stop in Phoenix, the pandemic hit, so mm. everything just stopped. So we thought, you know, our March series would be pushed out to May, then May looked like it was going to go to September, and then pretty soon the writing was on the wall, so I had to take all of the content and all of the sponsors and put together all of the contracts that I had already outstanding and signed, and I created mm. a virtual um, month-long event And in doing so, the five cities that I had planned, um, we pushed out far beyond them, and we were were actually able to go global during that time, Mm -hmm. which was very exciting. That's great. Well, that's quite a story. I mean, uh, you really sort of saw the situation as it was, figured out where the opportunity was, and went down that road. So good for you. And, uh, you know, and and I know that you're uh, so much well better known now than before so this actually brought you to the attention of a lot more people which is great um in fact as mentioned in the introduction you delivered a workshop for women in leadership at our call center campus event in june and uh, went went very well and uh fostering connections creating a comfortable atmosphere to network you know is a big part of the activity that you delivered And we all know that meeting like-minded professionals is one of the main reasons that attendees go to conferences in the first place. So what advice do you give to people looking to expand their personal networks 
in different ways? Well, I always say your network is your net worth. So it's really important when you're going to take the time and the investment of uh, going to a conference to really do your homework. So understand who is going to, to attend from, a, from an attendee perspective. Really look at the speakers and the whole agenda and understand who you'd like to meet and try and set time with them. You know, look at the sponsors that are and the vendors that are in the space that will be um, showcasing their, their products and services. What kinds of solutions can they offer you? What are you in the market for? Um, and then I would say to do your homework and really, you know, prearrange as many meetings as possible before you even arrive. So it's easy to, if you're looking at the the conference website, it's easy to see who's going to be there and sort of the order of things. Try and make appointments um, and really do your homework and prearrange as many meetings as possible because um, conferences are just notoriously very chaotic and it's really easy to say, oh, hey, you know, let's, let's meet up, you know, let's grab a cup of coffee while we're there. But, you know, it's undoubtedly likely that I'm in one direction and you're in another direction and, and uh, good intentions don't always get the job done. So, you know, it's best to say, hey, you know, it's Tuesday, there's lunch at, at 1230, why don't we plan to sit together, let's grab a cup of coffee before breakfast. So really try and make plans that are, are concrete with someone you'd like to really see. Yeah, and in most cases, the, the person that you're trying to connect with is going to be very appreciative of that as well. You've got, you know, situations where uh, if, you, if you're, for instance, a sponsor vendor or something like that, um, you go to shows and you're just hoping that people uh, come by, talk to you, et cetera. And in some cases, they will reach out to you ahead of time and try to uh, set something up with proper, probably sort of middling to meager results. If somebody actually reaches out to them, okay, either a speaker, a sponsor, uh, somebody else, a, a, a fellow you know, uh, traveler in the industry that you want to talk to, they'll be uh, flattered and happy to do it. It'll so, kind of put you in the situation of a super user, you know, if you uh, want to talk to a vendor, because uh, at that point you'll have their entire attention. So <laughs> it will really, really help you out. And if you have good questions for them and, uh, you know, good possibilities for them to follow up on, that can be really, really compelling. Do you see that as well? I do, but I think the most important piece of that is the follow-up. And I think people get really excited and they make all these meetings. But the fortune's in the follow-up. So you have to really develop a strategy for that mm -hmm. effective follow-up and stick to it. So, you know, having – a goal. I want to walk away with 10 meetings. Well, where are they going to come from? I want to go in there with 10 meetings. I want to have mm -hmm. a process. And everyone's got to develop that process and strategy that works for them. But having reasonable, like, you know, realistic follow-up plan is where you'll see a lot of that come together. All right, excellent. Excellent point. Yeah. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. Excellent. Okay. Now, you know, our audience for Call Talk includes a very good mix of men and women. Um, so, but what can we all do to better support women leaders in our organizations? Well, it's been very interesting to me because as I've been doing my um, my series for um, women in leadership, both it, many of the um, opportunities have been a blend of my virtual series and then also doing more things live in person. And we have had men try and attend both in person and on our virtual series. And, you know, the reason I think you know, I've asked a lot of men, like, this is really designed for women's leadership. What makes you want to attend this? And I hear that more often than not. They just want to understand how they can better support their um, their female executive leaders. So, you know, I, I firmly believe that together we'll always achieve more than we ever could by our uh, alone. So I would encourage um, in just under the general theme of just supporting our women leaders, listen to them and provide the tools and the resources that they need to grow. Um, continue to ask the right questions in your one-on-ones. Ask them what they are truly passionate about. Ask them um, to, you know, highlight their accomplishments and strengths, support those strengths. Um, we all have superpowers. 
we did a we did a whole session last year at the Austin Contact Center Alliance. There was a whole panel for women's leadership, and it was all about what their superpowers were and how they incorporate those in their day to day operations within their centers. And it was amazing to see how different and how valuable and unique everyone's traits were and how they supported their overall um, personal success uh, track. It was really, really awesome to see that. Um, And just making their employees feel valued, right? The best employees feel valued, appreciated, and completely supported by their their organizations. Right. And when you say employees at that point, it's both men and women. And uh, certainly the things that you were talking about, um, you know, are – true in terms of being listened to, being valued, uh, whether you're a man or a woman. But in the case of uh, women, having uh, a role model like yourself, somebody to bring together a community of people who can bounce ideas off of each other is, I think, extremely valuable. And I'm sure you've seen that time and time again. Time and time again, especially right now. I mean, Regardless of gender, there's so many um, questions and issues. The technology that's facing the um, industry as a whole is tr- is just coming at us so fast and furious. I mean, there's so many questions around AI that it doesn't matter who you are. Just having uh, the opportunity to talk to your peers in a relaxed, mm-hmm. trusted, comfortable setting, people have big concerns, and everyone has a different take on you know the next, the latest, and greatest technology to hit the industry. And there's I've seen, we've been doing a whole series around AI, and there's a lot of fear, anxiety, concern. There's also a lot of excitement. And where people are starting to, you know, build out solutions using AI, they really have a lot of questions that they want to just talk with like-minded, trusted colleagues. So, you know, it makes me, I'm delighted to be able to have that type of um, atmosphere where people can feel comfortable to talk about what really is, you know, this is a this is a challenge, and this is how we solved it. And just being able to share in an authentic way is 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 everything. Right. Okay. And, and what are the things that uh, what are the words that uh, I used in the intro for you was the word mentoring. And I know that you're focused on this concept of mentoring in the things that you do. And I personally am also a big believer in uh, the net, you know me- mentoring for for uh, things great and small. In fact, uh, I'm an assistant scout master. Just last night at the scout meeting, uh, there was a young scout who is trying to take more responsibility. So he's going to be the grub master and get the food for his patrol mm-hmm. for our next overnight. But he said, uh, you know, Mr. Belfiore, I've never done this before. And so I said, well, we're going to find a, uh, a mentor for you. And so the patrol leader uh, became his mentor for this new task for himself, you know, and and I think that uh, you know the concept of mentorship sometimes in some people's mind is is too uh, structured. It's uh, something that has to either has to be imposed through a program uh, of the company, and it can be, but it doesn't have to be that way. There's there's a lot of benefits and a lot of ways to do mentorship, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on 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 that. Well, sure. I mean, mentorship, there's so many amazing benefits um, for mentorship. And I think it's really important that you do have the right match and the right fit and a clear understanding of what you're looking to get out of the relationship. So I think that the idea of mentorship has changed also very recently. I think we have a traditional view that mentorship requires more of a junior person in their um in their organization being, um, you know, taken under the wing of someone more senior. But I really believe right now we're at a very unique place, and I've seen it time and time again, where some of the best mentor-mentee relationships are really cross-generational and have so much to give in both directions. So I'm seeing some of the younger, more millennials in the space being able to just lead with um, change the game with with so much of the social media and you know the technology pieces, and then having some of the more well seasoned professionals to go for more guidance and wisdom around some of the more you know traditional things where they may need 
assistance with in terms of negotiation or career pathing or just trusted um, trusted advice. But I think there's different there's different ways to um, find mentors, and I think that you have to be really clear on on what you have to give and what you wish to gain. Great, yeah, absolutely. And since most of the people listening to this will be contact center managers uh, at some level, and uh, they could be for the center as a whole or they could be in one of the specialty functions such as workforce management or QA, whatever it may be, Uh, could you just talk about programs that you've seen with regard to mentorship uh, and leadership that have been particularly helpful and that might be helpful for our our um, audience to to hear about sure so i mean when i'm thinking about them i'm thinking there's you know corporate mentorship programs where they're really driven uh, internally by the workplace to help employees grow um professionally by providing you know certain guidance skill development um career advice from internal employees um then there's also more peer-to-peer mentor opportunities. And I think th- some of those are great to find in, like, alumni um, groups um, or even in a, a industry groups, you know, much like the ones that we're talking about where it's more uh, peer-to-peer and they're – think about folks that are at similar stages of their career and they can really just share some of their experiences and um, their, their knowledge. Um, there's – Virtual mentorship, which is something that I'm working on right now, which is, you know, obviously a remote platform um, that's designed to connect different mentors and mentees that can be in completely different locations. Um, and I think right now also with the uh, the continuation of remote and hybrid work, it's really important to have someone that can be outside the four walls of your organization as well and can really give you some solid advice. Because sometimes that having that different perspective is incredibly valuable. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I know that extra perspective that comes from somebody who is on the outside and can kind of bring in experience from other places but other similar kinds of situations that is, can be very valuable to people. And let me just ask, too, with regard to mentorship for hard skills and mentorship for soft skills. And hopefully they come together in the same person. But, for example, we have just taken on a new colleague. And um, so that person has been mentored with or been matched with a couple of colleagues for the different uh, things that he will be doing, right, specifically. But, you know, I I didn't think about this explicitly, but I'm hoping and I'm uh, confident that, in fact, in terms of cultural skills, you know, getting to know how we do things and uh, the soft skills type of thing, that that will also be transmitted. Um, How do you make that intentional? Um, I think you need to identify the need on that. You know, like why are you having this in the first place? What are the goals? Um, you know, having the right buy-in, um, creating the framework and a structured plan that's going to help you outline the goals and the success. Um, uh, monitor the program, I'd say, right? I mean, you don't, you're not just going to set it and forget it. You can course correct. You can take a, a temperature midway through. Um, but right. I think you should make sure that it's benefiting everyone um, that's there. And, and I think also making sure you've got the right level of person and the right personalities that are going to be leading this for you. Right, right. Okay, shifting gears a little bit, yeah, another word that comes through with you is community, developing and leveraging community. And so what does and has community meant to you in your own leadership journey? Um, I think community, when I think of community, I just instantly think of connections. And I think about having um, a strong community of people that are just really strong, really smart, really supportive, folks that you can go to, you know, your extended tribe that you can go to with questions, that you can go to with challenges, 
that you can go to just to share the good, the bad, the ugly, that you are supported, um, where you can create an environment where everyone has a chance to be heard. Um, you can, and I, and this is part of why I loved the live event world because it gave me that opportunity to bring people together from all walks of life to say, to take them by the hand across the room and say, you know what, Bruce, you should really know Alan and let's go over here and I want you to meet and be able to have sort of that, that knowledge share, that networking piece. Um, and it, you know, it's really, truly helped me in terms of my own career to build visibility, um, and now, you know, in, in terms of becoming more of an influencer and developing a, a personal brand, all these pieces sort of fit together. But I think one of the most valuable things from having a really um, robust community is the ability to um, expose yourself to different perspectives and to learn new things. And it's really important. I've learned this through the years at different stages of leadership that, uh, it's important to maintain an open mind because I may go into a situation thinking this is the best course of action, but then after mm-hmm. listening to different folks, I, you know, can have a different uh, a different perspective. And well, maybe what I thought wasn't the right way, and this is the better course of action, even though I I believed it, I was leaning towards this way. This will fit the group better. So you mm. know, being able to have that flexibility and to think of you know the greater good is is something that's really helped me and that's really just helped me to learn how to be a better listener um and maintain an open mind and um you know I just like to consider myself a lifelong learner like I my um my grandmother lived to be 100 and she was just such a lifelong learner like always always wanted to learn new things always just excited about she didn't know something she'd look it up She's always have had a very inquisitive mind, and I got a lot of that from her. So um, I just love to bring people together. At heart, I'm a connector. I mean, my tagline is meet, connect, collaborate. Um, you could put that on my tombstone one day. Like, I just think collaboration is everything. <laughs> and it's true. I mean, that's that's why I think even my work with doing strategic partnership work, it's just so yeah. authentic and genuine. It just comes easy, and I, I love to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen. Uh, if your grandmother lived to be a hundred, that won't be on your tombstone for a long time, which is a good thing. <laughs> a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's good. You know, one of the things as you go through this uh, sort of list of characteristics uh, of what community is, you know, I put down connections, support sharing knowledge um it brings me to think about a uh, about studies that we've done on agent satisfaction employee satisfaction in the contact center and one of the things that comes out in the sort of unscripted the open uh, open ended questions that they can just write about is the word family it comes out more than you would expect a family feeling right inside of mm-hmm. the contact center and I think for a growing number of people uh, who are, for re- various reasons, disconnected from family or come from very small families or whatever, uh, it can be that kind of uh, feeling if it's nurtured by management and actually nurtured by the people themselves can be very, very compelling because the connections, support, knowledge sharing, those are things that uh, you hear about and feel both in the family setting and in the community setting. Would you agree? I would agree, but I'd also take that a bit further and say, and just I, I feel that 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 goes back to really empowerment and ownership and just feeling like that you belong, but also feeling that you have the right tools to be effective in your job and having um, the right you know that you'll be supported. You can handle any any customer that comes your way because you know you've got the tools and the the, the knowledge to support you, right? So right. if you don't have the best tools or if you're sifting through SharePoint trying to find an answer while someone's angry and you can't find, you know, the, the, the answer that they're looking for at a conversational speed, that just frustrates the, the caller and it makes your job a lot harder. So... Um, I mean, there's really good technology and tools out there that that 
the companies, the happiest agents have the best tools. So I think right. that you, you you can see that inside and out. Like when you have the best tools to work for, then you can work, show up and be your best every day. It's a very difficult and demanding job. And, um, you know, there's just the frontline agent abuse that goes on on a daily basis is it's unacceptable. And I think that the best um, organizations should – Make sure that their um, agents are, have the right the right tools to so that they can do a better job, so they can have the happiest customers. Right? There's a whole right. formula there. Mhm, mhm. Absolutely. The uh, people, process, and technology uh, brought together so that uh, you're able to deliver the best service to the customers and also create the most happiness among the employees. That's uh, that's that's sort of the magic sauce. And it can be done because we've seen it done. I'm sure you've seen it done in many uh, of your clients. We see it done in many of our clients. And sometimes it takes a while to get there. Sometimes it takes a few years to get there. But if uh, you get them on the right road, uh, they can do it. And at that point in time, it's an interesting thing because the um, increase in effectiveness, which is satisfaction all around, right, for for the people working there and for the employees and for the customers, rather, uh, and the e- efficiency of the operation uh, end up coming together in, in a very positive way so that, uh, in fact, it's, you know, the best run, the best technology, if I can make up a word there, uh, centers and uh, the, the ones where the communication is the best and where um, – Silos are not a problem, but they can be, you know, pushed, punched through any time it's necessary for good reasons. Then, you know, then you have the best, the best uh, results as well. So, yeah. Oh uh, well, it's, it's been said that silos are really just best for keeping um, ballistic missiles held. So, <laughs> um, I, I think that we can see examples of that just by brands that we love right? Brands that we have affinity for, brands that we're loyal to, like those brands, and there should be that some that just jump off the top of your mind, um, they do that. And they're also the brands that you hear the stories about that their customers rave about on social media and the ones that truly like delight their customers that that go the extra mile to make make you happy when things go wrong. And inevitably things go wrong. It, no one's perfect but how mm-hmm. they pick up the pieces and make it right are the stories of, like, retail legends. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, listen, we, we've had quite a little tour de force here and really mm-hmm. does, uh, you know, come down to the things you were talking about, the power of community. Are there any other final thoughts you'd like to share with our audience before we hand things back over to Alan? Um, I would just say that this, um, community and the industry of customer care is the most caring community I've ever encountered in my in my career. Um, I think they are the most caring people. They understand. They have empathy. They are just a. It's just a league of their own, and it's you know no surprise to me that they are in charge of the you know business of care because they all have just hearts of gold for the most part. And there's a reason why I think that people will – they may leave their center, but they stay in the industry because they really, truly care. Right, right. No, that's a great point. It's a great point. I've worked in other industries as well, and I found really good people in the other industries, but this is a special industry in terms of the character and the nature uh, and the motivations of the people in it. So uh, I think that's a great message, actually, to end up – uh, on for this uh, this call talk episode, so thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we really appreciate your insights, and uh, with that, I'll hand things back over to Alan to wrap things up. Thank, thanks so much, Bruce. Okay, thank you again to Valerie and to Bruce for your insightful discussion on today's show. Be sure to join us next time for another great show, or look at our huge selection of archived shows on hot topics at benchmarkportal.com. Then click on resources. Then you'll find Call Talk, where you'll find over 15 seasons of this show. From all of us at Benchmark Portal, keep those headsets steady and your fingers ready. This is Alan Pockhotter signing out. Have a great day. <laughs>